Right guys, uh, today we're uh, looking at the overview of the structure of the brain. Um, it's a brief overview of the structure of the different compartments of the brain and there's a fine focus on towards um, Alzheimer's disease um, and looking at how Alzheimer's disease um, is caused within the brain and then um, how and why it affects the speech and the language areas of um, the people who are suffering from Alzheimer's disease. So first and foremost, um, we're looking at the over overview of the brain. We've got this area over here, and this area over here is referred to as the brain, brain stem. And the main functions of the brain stem are to do with uh, breathing, heart rate, swallowing. Um, and then the next structure that we're referring to as is just this bit over here, and this bit over here is referred to as the cerebellum. And the cerebellum, again, is a basic function of balance and equilibrium to making sure that um, you can maintain um, posture. Okay. Um, the next area is this bit at the back of the brain over here, and this bit is referred to as the occipital lobe, the occipital lobe, and it's for visual input, uh, for visual perception, and for recognition of printed words and anything things that you can you can see. Okay. Um, and then the next area that we move on from there is this top bit over here, on either side over here, this top bit over here. And this is referred to as the parietal lobe, which is again important for uh, visual attention and for uh, touch perception. Okay, so senses and touch perception, um, and also for manipulation of objects as well. Um, moving on from there, we then move on to this over here on this side over here and this bit over here is referred to as the temporal lobe and temporal lobe is important in hearing ability memory acquisition and also some visual perceptions as well okay moving on from there we move on to towards the front of the brain over here and the front of the brain referred to as the frontal lobe section over here and again this is for attention uh, for time perception uh, judgment, uh, control of emotions. Okay, on this side. Okay. Now, when we dissect the brain um, through the centre over here, um, each side of the brain is referred to cerebral hemispheres. So you've got left and right cerebral hemispheres. And when we've dissected straight down through the brain in the, in the centre over here, we open up and it looks something like that. Okay, now first and foremost, we can see in here directly um, the gap which is present around, wait, just this bit over here, okay, and that bit there is referred to as the ventricles, okay, the ventricle, okay, and the over structure around it over here is the corpus callosum, which is over here, and also um, when we look at this even deeper, we also refer this area around here as the parahippocampal area and also within the parahippocampal area there's a hippocampal area okay now when the hippocampal area is absolutely vital because that is the area which is responsible for the development of Alzheimer's disease now um, we're going to have a look at um, how this Alzheimer's disease is, is produced within this hippocampal area over here um, and then uh, we can have a look at the differences between the two. Now, first and foremost, within, within this hippocampal area that we're looking at, um, we have specific, a specific protein. And that specific protein that's present inside here is referred to as the protein tau, T-A-U. And that tau protein is vital because in each nerve cell, what it does is it keeps hold of the structure of the nerve cell in its shape, in its normal shape. However, when the nerve cell, uh, the tau protein, becomes dysfunctioned or is mutated or hyperphosphorylates, which is term referred to as not functioning accurately, then the tau will um, degrade and the microtubules that keep the nerve cell in its shape will decrease and they will drop like as though a scaffolding has come down. And as a scaffolding comes down, it then will result in 
um, a reduction in the memory area which is uh, present within this um, hippocampal area. So if we were to just turn this brain round and look at it from a different angle, inside here, these areas on either side are quite full. However, if we get a um, Alzheimer's disease being created, the areas which are like light white and the darker brown areas will start to form gaps within them. And as gaps are formed within these areas, um, it will affect the, uh, the, the area of memory and language, which will reduce in size due to the degradation of the tau protein, therefore will affect the, um, will affect the memory function and the language function for um, the individual patients. Okay, so... And when we take the cross-section a look at the, the brain, what we can see is various structures, indentations and the outer area, which is referred to as the sulcus and the gyrus, okay, which is, which is present on here. And deep within there, the two holes there are referred to as the ventricles. You can see on there as well, ventricles. The area that we are mainly concerned about in this, in Alzheimer's, is when we get a reduction and a, um, a reduction in the nerve cells, um, where the nerve cells cannot function effectively, moreover, round about this region over here, and when these nerve cells are damaged and the tau protein dysfunctions, then we get start getting holes that are formed within the memory area, as you can see on here as well. So the memory and language area have got these gaps in it, here and here, whereas in a normal brain, it should look something like his on the model that I've got in front of me here, and also, as you can see, it's all full on either side of the brain on this side as well.